let's look at the solution for example on compressors. I hope you have gone through the explanation of the indicator diagram, uh, the way it works or the way it looks and how to understand it because this is uh, integral to understanding how you do a calculation for a compressor problem. In this case, we are told that this is a single stage compressor, bore or diameter 80 millimeter, stroke 100 millimeter. The clearance volume is 6% of the swept volume. You're given the inlet conditions 100 kilonewtons and 32 degrees centigrade, and the delivery pressure 650 kilonewton per meter square. You're asked to draw the PV diagram and you're told that the compression processes are polytropic with N equals 1.32. There are six items we need to calculate. Okay, and we are told the compressor is running at 1450 RPM. Let's get started. We now know how to understand the compressor diagram, the indicator diagram, and in this case, we are going to make use of it in the solution. The diameter of the compressor, 80 millimeters, the stroke, 100 millimeters, we can calculate the swept volume because it is the pi bore squared over 4 times the stroke and we learn to work in millimeters uh, sorry we learn to work in meters which is uh, uh, for a beginner it's safer to work in meters and we get the swept volume of 5.027 times 10 to the power of minus 4 cubic meters we also now get the clearance volume which is 6% of the swept volume. We now use the pressures. We look at the pressures. We are given the pressure is 100 kilonewtons per meter squared inlet and the outlet is 650 kilonewtons per meter squared or times 10 to the power of 3 pascal. Now, it's important we use these two pressures to calculate VD. Now, what is VD? V subscript D. If you look carefully at your compressor diagram, we need to know the volume here. VD represents the distance on the graph between D and 0. And this is obtained by finding the initial pressure as 650 kilonewton per meter squared, final pressure as 100 kilonewton per meter squared, and we know the index of compression for the polytropic compression. This allows us to now calculate VD. Reason? It's very critical that once we know VD, we can calculate the total distance, the swept volume and the clearance volume mix. And from there, if we deduct VD, we can get the induced volume. So, if we now look at the formula, the polytropic rule, where VD is our final pressure and we know the pressures P2 and P1 and the clearance volume, we get a value of VD as 1.245 times 10 to the power of minus 4 cubic meters. This allows us to calculate VA 
which is the swept volume plus the clearance volume. VA is equal to the swept volume plus the clearance volume. Remembering that VA is representing this volume from A to zero. We also then can calculate VA minus VD. Okay, VD here, VA here. Note that VA minus VD is in fact the induced volume at inlet conditions where the inlet pressure is 100 kilonewtons per meter squared or 100 kilopascal. But let's move to the question now. And if you look at the question, we have worked out the first answer, the induced volume in cubic meters per cycle. But if you look at the second part, we need to work out the free air delivery in meter cube per second. Now, the free air delivery is the air through the compressor reduced to atmospheric condition. So, now let's look at the If you study carefully now, we are going to find the free air delivery. So, we are knowing that the atmospheric condition given as 300 Kelvin, the inlet conditions 32 degrees or 305 Kelvin, we are told atmospheric pressure 101 0.3 kilopascal and we are told the compressor is running at 1450 rpm which we have now reduced to 1450 divided by 60 to change to seconds so our free air delivery expressed in meter cube is the induced volume multiplied by the conversion factor, atmospheric pressure divided by the inlet pressure, inlet pressure divided by the atmospheric pressure using the familiar P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Now, what we have in the answer here is the FAD now reduced from the induced volume per cycle to standard atmospheric conditions. But the sum wants us to do a calculation with respect to time. So, if you look at the next line, Vf, which is the volumetric flow rate, is equal to the volumetric flow rate at volume at FAD conditions multiplied by N, the RPM reduced to RPS, uh, revolutions per second. And this gives us the FAD flow through the compressor as the induced volume in terms of meter cube per second. Now, the next two boxes are pretty easy to understand. The first one is calculating the volumetric conditions at FAD and we get 
the answer shown 78.89869 and the second efficiency is the volumetric efficiency at inlet conditions and we get 81.226 now after that we need to calculate the mass flow rate so we know for air we get the gas constant 287 joules per kilogram k we can calculate the mass flow rate which we get as 0 0.011 kilograms per second incidentally the conditions we used are the FAD conditions. It doesn't really matter. You can use the inlet conditions as long as you stick to V inlet conditions, the induced volume, and T inlet conditions. The mass flow rate is still the same. Then the mass flow rate having been obtained, we need to calculate the power. We need to know what is the temperature after the compression using the familiar polytropic compression we get a temperature of 480.1 the indicated power using the formula for compressors n over n minus 1 multiplied by the mass flow rate r times the difference in temperature gives us an indicated power of 2.337 kilowatt this ends the solution for the example.